So one of the biggest uh, creative changes in mainstream comics recently was the big switch of uh, Brian Michael Bendis from Marvel to DC. Now, I mean, Bendis was so important in the resurgence of Marvel in the uh, uh, early part of the century um, that I don't know if you know, they would be what they are now without the work that he did back then under Joe Quesada's leadership. Uh, so him moving to D.C. is almost like back in the 70s when Kirby made the switch from Marvel to D.C. Like, it's, it's, it's that major of a change in that um, he has... Bendis has enough of a following that people will... will go to read a Bendis book, not just because of the character, right? They care about the creators. And, and if you care about writers on superhero comics anyway, then you probably like s at least some of the work that Bendis has done. I mean, whether it's his decade plus at Marvel, um, where he really was the guy who brought back Daredevil um, and... Uh, was was really important in the founding of the Ultimate Marvel Universe, including Ultimate Spider-Man, which led to the Ultimates, which led to the Avengers movies. So, like, um, and and Miles Morales, uh, uh, which he created later in that run, has you know proven to be a character that still has relevance today uh, in the comics and on the big screen. Uh, so, um, so Bendis means a lot. Right, And so him moving to D.C., he got a deal to bring all of his favorite collaborators with him and do their own indie books, and as well as being put in charge of, who is arguably uh, the flagship character of the D.C. universe. So he's writing both action comics and Superman. Um, and they're both two different kind of interesting books, and I've been enjoying them so far. been catching a lot of flack online from what I've seen. Um... But I've enjoyed the run so far. I wasn't so thrilled with the Man of Steel um, miniseries that kicked it all off. Brought about some changes like the destruction of Kandor and, and moving the Fortress of Solitude f uh, to the Bermuda Triangle for whatever reason. Um, but those things aside, uh, what I was really worried about was that you know, Bendis is best known for writing his street-level characters, like Daredevil, like I mentioned. Of course, he was the creator of Jessica Jones, back when that comic was called Alias. You know, he came from his own, like, indie roots, doing books like Goldfish, and, uh, you know, some of his other indie stuff was all very kind of grounded, street-level crime stuff with kind of a, a David Mamet-esque ear for dialogue. And, um, you know, that's not really what you think of when you think of Superman, necessarily, but... Um, you know, if we remember that Bendis also worked on books like The Pulse, where it was sort of an inside journalism look at the Daily Planet and how they re uh, uh, interacted with superheroes, you can see where he, um, he he's definitely got what it takes to, to take on Superman's supporting cast and make them way more interesting and way more important, because I really think those are the most important characters um, to Superman. So... Anyway, um, the, the, this is the beginning of the all-new Leviathan arc. And it starts off with uh, uh, Jimmy Olsen. And that's always a good sign because Jimmy's one of my all-time favorite comic book characters. Along with uh, Uncle Scrooge and Rick Jones. Um, and it starts off with, uh, with uh, Jimmy getting into trouble and running into Cobra. Who's sort of a cult organization now. And... Uh, it's a really typical kind of chaotic Bendis action scene. They're all, everyone's, uh, in like a fervor for Cobra and they're chanting their faith to Kali Yuga. And, uh, you know, Jimmy, like a dummy pulls out his camera, and starts snapping pictures of all this stuff. So of course they, uh, chase him out of there, but, uh, then the whole place explodes. So something's going on. Um, Jimmy's really worried about what happened, what he's seen, and, uh, he takes that to, to Perry White, and he's not even sure he can trust Perry with the information for some reason. He, Jimmy feels like he's really on to something here, and, uh, we can sort of see 
in the background, we see uh, Robinson Good, a.k.a. the Red Cloud, uh, a, a sort of a new villain in the Superman universe who can, if not defeat Superman, at least she's proven she can fight him to a standstill. And she works for the uh, um, Metropolis sort of underground mob that, uh, that until now has had to just been content with like never saying Superman's name and being very silent and using all these secretive techniques and knowing when he's engaged in something in outer space and using those moments to commit crime in Metropolis. But now that sort of uh, equation has changed because not only um, can the Red Cloud uh, battle Superman to a standstill, uh, the organization has also recently purchased the Daily Planet. So now we've sort of got a mobbed up corruption journalism story and this is like a perfect Bendis territory. So um, I really like the direction that it's going. Uh, Superman's sort of uh, distracted by his own things going on and doesn't really pay attention to the stuff that Jimmy's saying that probably uh, turns out to be you know really important. Um, but what's really going on here, uh, what the cover alludes to, the most dangerous secret in the DC Universe may be that Lois Lane, speaking to her dad, uh, General Sam Lane, I guess, he works for the, uh, what is it, the Department of Extra Normal Operations. So he hates aliens. And for whatever reason, Lois has decided now is the moment to reveal to him that uh, she married an alien, namely Superman. And uh, his response is sort of just to, like, walk away. Um, like, is this for real? Yes. Gotta go. Uh, not exactly sure what that means, but I don't think it probably bodes super well. Um, you know, meanwhile, back in Metropolis, we've got the appearance of uh, Amanda Waller, who's in that same department of extra normal blah blah blahs. And, uh, she just sort of, like, called out Superman's name in order to get his attention, and pull them in, um, and that's more or less the end. She disappears, something happened, we don't really know what's going on, right? This is the beginning of Leviathan, uh, which has been promised to be a sort of new underground organization, or, or at least involved sort of those, these organizations. It might be that they're sort of wiping out the rest of the underground, like Cobra. Um, so, this was written by Be Brian Michael Bendis, of course, and with art by Steve Epting, who I first remember from his work on Captain America with Ed Brubaker uh, on the Winter Soldier arc, and it was such great stuff that, you know, he just shot to the top of the ranks of, like, great superhero comics artists so having a top-notch artist like that uh and a top-notch writer like brian bendis is putting together a pretty satisfying superman experience for me so go to your local comic book store if you've got one and buy superman buy action comics subscribe to them start reading them they're interesting they're fun to follow um and you know, for all the problems they talk about in the comic book industry, the solution is right here. The solution is high quality creators uh, on, on books that get people excited about reading comics and get them uh, to go into the stores and, and buy comics. That's the only thing that's going to save the comics industry. So, um, so be a hero and buy Action Comics 1007.